Oh, the best Christmas. I'm going to give you my best Christmas gift, uh, my 10 best ones I remember getting. And then Larry's going to give you his 10 best Christmas gifts. And hopefully in the comments, you'll tell me about some good things you got for Christmas. Or maybe not. Let's see here. Let's go with number 10. Let's see. Where's number 10 at? There's number 10 right there. Okay, I'll put this one on the list just because I wanted maybe you guys to help me out here because it's kind of a generic toy. But I can't find anything about it online. It was uh, it was probably about the size of a of a comic book or maybe a little bigger maybe like a note notebook you take to school it was probably about it was about this thin and it was a maze and on the inside it had a marvel now i've seen a lot of these little ripoff marvel maze games but this one was so different it was so fun i remember i had two of them one i could saw easy one was very hard but inside the little maze was like a little little pedal like a little bb and you you know you do like this to get it to go where you want it to go through the maze and on the back it had a little lock because you had like four uh four little bb's inside so you would lock it oh i remember timing myself see if i could get to this end to that end one was like a square pattern that had amazing squares but i've looked everywhere to find that i would love to have that again and i can't find any reference to it at all sorry my eyes at you when i'm trying to do the action figure show oh no i hope you haven't been hanging out with scott Bayo. number nine super mario brothers 2 now, I'm a big fan of Nintendo, and I really love the Mario games. Still love them today. They're pretty cool, the Mario games. But Super Mario 2 was special for me because it was the hottest toy that year. What was it, 88? Trying to guess off my head, 89? And I remember my mom got it for me. They had a radio contest, an auction, where they were saying they were raising money for charity. And she would, you would call the radio station, tell them what you wanted to bid. And I think the going rate was probably like $60 in. But I remember somebody would call and outbid my mom. My mom would call back and outbid them. Finally got it. It was like $100. It was crazy. I couldn't believe my mom bought me that game for $100. And I was the only one in my little area of friends that had Super Mario Brothers. So everybody's like, hey, let's go to Junk Teenager's house and play Mario. Oh, it was a lot of fun to have that and show how you're not allowed to come play Mario. Maybe you can if you let me borrow your Transformer action figure. But... It's pretty cool. Super Mario Brothers 2. Let's see what's next on the list. This is something I really wanted. And I think I was a little older to have it at the time. I was probably 15, maybe a little 16. I probably wasn't 16 yet. This was a Fisher, yeah, Fisher Price toy. Get that. Fisher Price video camera. But it used a cassette tape. I think it was called the PXL 2000. It recorded in black and white. It recorded in black and white. Hooked it up to your TV. Looked horrible. But I was like, I got my own camcorder. Now, back then, we did have a camcorder, but you had to put half of the VCR on your shoulder in this big bag and walk around with the camera with a handle. The battery would last maybe about four minutes. And your parents had it. They weren't about to let you go run around the woods or up and down the street with your camera. But if you had the Fisher Price PXL, you could take it out. Your parents couldn't say nothing because they gave it to you. But like I said, it looked like crap, and I can't remember ever making anything with it. But I did love it. It looked pretty cool. I still got some of those tapes. I need to buy one to see what's on them. Buy a player so I can find out what's on them. Well, we got that number, that's just kind of a generic one at number seven, bicycle. But mostly the bicycles I got are around 13 or 14 because that was freedom. Remember back then that was freedom when they let kids leave the house? I can remember waking up about, you know, 7, 7.30, got a bike for Christmas. By eight o'clock, I was gone. No cell phone, no communication. I was gone. Even if my friends wasn't with me, I was gone. Did I say you that? I was gone. gone. What's that, Larry? You were gone. You were eastbound and down. Yes, I was gone. I was gone. I mean, I was in the woods, up and down the street, neighborhood after neighborhood. Come back about 8 o'clock at night. No cell phone. Nobody could GPS you. Nobody could call you. Real freedom. Out there in the world by yourself. Oh, so bicycles was always fun right there. Number six, kind of surprising one here, Raiders of the Lost Ark, the VHS. All right, I almost said VHS game, not VHS game, VHS. I remember my grandma got me this one, 82, right before Temple of Doom came out because there was a teaser at the beginning. It really didn't show nothing, but it was a Temple uh, Doom teaser. But I remember $50 for a video game, uh, video game, for a video a movie of a video it was crazy fifty dollars but i was like that was her limit to get me something for christmas fifty dollars your limit i was like we're going we had to go to this little special place that had videotapes that rented them out and you had to special order it and get it and uh, i remember my brother was like no get that for everybody because whenever i want to watch it 
He's, he's going to say, no, you can't watch my Raiders or Lost Ark. I never said that. I shared my toys. Share my toys. Just like he shared his Star Wars toys. He shared them. Uh, let's see here. Number five. Number five right here on the card. And I kind of talked about it before, a game, but Nintendo. How can I do a top 10 list of the best Christmas presents without Nintendo? I'm going to say this is 85 again, top of my head. But I can remember probably that October going to a girl's house, Katrina. We walked up to her house. Her brother was in his room playing um, Mario. And I was, I was blown away because by this time I always saw Atari. But I was already out of Atari. But that was the graphics I was used to, you know, combat and stuff. And it was like, what is this? So I went home and told my parents, gotta have this thing. It's called Nintendo. It's got a little plumber guy that jumps around. And I got it and changed my world. I mean, I was obsessed with uh, Nintendo games for a long time after that. Number four. This is a good one, Star Wars fans. Jabba the Hutt playset. Now, I had a lot of Star Wars toys before that. My brother would get some. I would get some. And usually he had all the cool toys for Star Wars Empire. And I would play along with them. But by the time Return of the Jedi came out, my brother was out of Star Wars, didn't care about Star Wars, had moved on. So this was my first really playset that was all to myself when I got it for uh, Christmas, the Jabba the Hutt playset. Of course, it came with Jabba, Celestia Speed Crumb, and it was a lot of fun. Um, let's see what we're up to now. Number three, a little more of my teenage years, I got this stereo that had a CD player in it. This had to be 89, right around the CD craze. Stuff about this tall, has speakers on the side, turntable, two tape decks, two tape decks. High speed dubbing, that's all you need to know right there. High speed dubbing. I could dub anyone's cassette tape in the neighborhood at high speed. That's right. Nicky down the road, you want him to make a copy of your Duran Duran cassette? He would take however long it took you to listen to that cassette. You bring it to my house, I can do it in double the time and charge you less. So, I love this thing. It had a CD player on it, and I was really into music then. Probably different than everybody. All my other friends were into Beastie Boys or Guns N' Roses, and I was buying it. Randy Travis, oh, Dwight Yoakam. I love Dwight Yoakam. Hank Jr. So, you know, I was a little different, but I was still having a lot of fun. CD player was amazing, but the high def. Uh, I remember making up my own fake radio shows. Yeah, on my cassette tape at home. And now look at me. Now I'm almost 40 years old and I'm making up my own talk show. Some things never change, I guess. Number two. This one might be a little embarrassing. Again, I think I was too old for it, but I wanted it. I got it. That was McGruff, the crime dog. Remember those commercials with McGruff, that little cartoon dog, come out and tell you stuff about being safe and everything? Well, I remember a drugstore by my house had a stuffed animal doll. This I wanted it so bad. I used to go in that drugstore and just look at it like, I want that. One day that's going to be mine. One day it was. And again, I think I was a little too old. I was probably about 11 or 12, which might be a little too old for this thing. But, man, I loved it. I loved it. Uh, where are we at now? Oh, number one? Number one. This is number one because it was the first time I got a whole set for anything. I got the He-Man collection. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. This was probably 83. I was still in the Star Wars, and my friends were getting into He-Man. And I was like, Phew. He man, I was a one trick pony all the time. Nintendo didn't get anything else. I had Nintendo. Star Wars was my action figures. Got Star Wars. Didn't get GI Joe. Didn't get Transformers. Didn't get anything else. But my parents or Santa Claus bought me a Castle Grayskull. All the figures that were out at the time, and I think the Land Shark and a couple other things. I think I got two of those birds. So it made me collect He-Man stuff. Got me into He-Man, but I was like, whoa. Okay, I was wrong. I missed out. This is great. So after that, my love for Star Wars toys kind of died down, and I started getting into He-Man. I don't know. But that's that's a look at 10 best Christmas stuff I got. And it's weird when I'm thinking of this list that has so many Christmases, but it's really hard to even think of stuff that I got. Which I'm sure that Christmas of each year, I was excited and had a want list and couldn't believe what I got. And now, looking back, I'm like, what did I get? that? Year? What did I get? I couldn't even think of hardly nothing. So, that's my 10. What about you, Larry? Tell us some 10 things you got for Christmas that you really did love. Well, let's see. It was hard to narrow it down to two things, but let's see. At number 10, my buddy, kid sister. I know everybody wanted my buddy, the doll of my buddy, but 
But I wanted a kid's sister, and I got it. I love this thing. I carried it everywhere I went, dragged it everywhere. I remember tying a fish string to it, and I would just walk up and down the road and drag it behind me. I love this thing. Number nine, something I think you all had, the Fisher-Price Music Box. When we were little, I think we all had this thing. Had a little clock on it. And here's number eight. Uh, I was a little older when I got this, but it was so much fun. I used to take it outside. I like to do it on a hill, especially if it was icy hill. That way you could do it while you were sliding down the hill. And that was a sit-and-spin Ewok. Now, I know they made all the sit-and-spins, but my favorite was the Ewok one. And I like to slide while I was doing it, so I turned it into a sit-and-spin and slide Ewok. Um, number seven, collection of action figures. We all loved Kenner action figures growing up. We had Star Wars, we had superpowers, and my favorite Kenner action figure line was Glamour Gals. I love this action figure line. I remember one year for Christmas, I got like five of them all at one time. Of course, for some reason, it was all the five of the same figure instead of buying one of each. But, who cares? I had Glamour Gals. Number six. Calculator. I know a calculator doesn't sound fun, but look at this. Remember this? This, like, professor guy? It was, like, my first calculator. And I remember uh, adding up, like, two plus three and finding out that it was six and all that stuff. It was a lot of fun. And probably one of my earliest memories is a game I had. And number five, Pass the Nut. Uh, anybody play this? Did anyone out there pass the nut? Did you like passing a nut? <laughs> I'll tell you. When I got this thing, I pass a nut all the time. Just looking at it makes me want to pass a nut. I love to pass nut. Okay, number four. I don't know what this thing's called, but I call it the Hong Kong Fooey car. Because it looks like something Hong Kong Fooey would drive. You remember that crazy dog that had the crazy karate chops? Yeah, Hong Kong Fooey car. I love this thing. I just ride up and down the street in it. Number three. It was a fake telephone, but it was a Mickey Mouse talking telephone. It used to talk all the time until I kicked it across the room. Number two, back to Fisher Price. This was a lot of fun. This was like my pre-action figure days. The Fisher Price parking ramp. I, I know, this would had to be a popular toy. I'm sure everyone watching this video had it or knew someone that did. And number nine, probably my all-time favorite Christmas gift I ever got was the time we got a new cave. Yes, our last cave melted and we had to, we were out of cave, we didn't have a cave for about six months. And then my dad found this new cave, we moved in. <laughs> oh, it was nice to finally have a ice roof over our head. An ice cave. Well, that's something, that's something the family could all use, Larry. So I understand that, the ice cave. Well, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about things we never got for Christmas that we wanted, that we never, never got. But we'll be right back after this. I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. You just said the magic words, now look what you did. And look what Toys R Us is featuring for less this season. The Kenner Centurion's evil action figures, Dr. Terror and Hacker, $12.97 each, and their sinister Doom Drone Straper, $8.79. Awesome. Luckily, the Kenner Centurion's heroic action figures are priced right at $12.97 each, with their Skybolt plane, $19.97. It's the world's biggest Toys R Us. Go! Al's in a one-hour special. Ow! When the Tanners lose out, he makes some new friends to get back home. Ow! It's Al's special Christmas. Then, Philip Michael Thomas hosts an all-new Motown Merry Christmas with the Pointer Sisters, the Temptations, and many more in Motown's Merry Christmas, a night of specials Monday. I didn't know what to get anyone for the holidays. My Aunt Esther is always a mystery. Uncle Charlie, shopping for him is an adventure. Now, my nephew Timmy was easy. All he wanted was, hey -ya! This, from Blockbuster Video. Then it hit me. I could make everyone happy at Blockbuster. And with Blockbuster gift certificates, Aunt Esther can rent all kinds of mysteries, Uncle Charlie can choose his own adventures, and I can have a wonderful life. Blockbuster Video! Give the gift of entertainment. Hey, Jumpman <laughs> Channel popping, though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs> 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 